Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. Today I have another marker review for you, and this time it is the brand new Artify Advanced Markers. Um, I've reviewed Artified Markers in the past. I have their brush version, which I think is a wonderful option, a great buy, and uh, definitely a good budget alternative to other brush markers. And they've recently come out with this new brand of marker, and you can kind of see how the, um, I can actually compare, let's get the same exact color. Um, they've come out with a new marker, it's called the Artify Enhanced, and it's got a different kind of marker shape than I've seen. I thought I had seen a marker with this shape before, but I could not find um, anything online matching this, but it's got a fat end where the chisel tip is and a, uh, a skinny end where the bullet tip is. It's got the number stickers on the body itself, in case you misplace the caps, and then it's got a plastic color chip cap with the number printed on it on the fat end and nothing on the skinny end but it does come with stickers that you can color and put on your markers you could put them on the caps or on the body it's up to you um, so we're going to compare those two uh, types of markers in a minute but um, first I'll show you how the box comes now I did an unboxing of these when they came in and we did a little coloring demo in that video and I'll try to remember to link that down below but it comes kind of in a cube like this and the packaging is actually a a stand as well, which I like. Um, all your markers are kept in order with this grid that's inside, it's like a cardboard grid. The thing I liked about the um, the brush markers is now that your brush markers are available in a stand like this or in a plastic case, and the plastic case was really nice because it was really sturdy and you could had a handle, you could carry it around really easily. Um, and it wasn't individually, you didn't have individual slots, but you had groups where you could fit like six or nine markers together, which I thought was kind of um, was kind of handy. Uh, but we'll, we'll get into the comparison in a minute. The one thing I didn't like about this box though is that when I went to fold it back to make it into a stand, the, the uh, paper coating um, cracked. So it didn't affect how it's used, but it did, you know, it might be something that's, you know, it could be a bummer. I know a lot of people like to keep their stuff in pristine condition and, you know, that would just be kind of a bummer for, um, for some people. And I couldn't see how any other way that, I mean, it's got to bend that much. If you don't have the, if you don't fold it back on itself, then it bends even more. So I don't know if there was a way to, I could have avoided that. Maybe if I use, maybe if you get this and use like a bone folder or something to kind of stretch that um, the area on the crease before you bend it back, that might help. But anyway, it gives me a nice um, a nice storage solution where I can see everything and I can put things back in the right order. It comes with a swatch card, and the swatch card is laid out pretty um, uh, pretty logically actually. And the nice thing about that is you can you can arrange your markers in the box in the same order the swatch card goes, so it's very easy to see what color you want and find it. Um, if you put it put it back in the box, it'll come in a crazy order. Uh, but after you like swatch them and put them back in that order, and I think you'll have a lot um, a much easier time finding blending combinations and whatnot. It's got a pretty good balanced assortment of colors. Um, you might want more of like earth tones or skin tones or something if you do a lot of portraits, but I think overall it's got a pretty um, a pretty nice arrangement of like you got a good um, assortment of pastels and vibrant tones and you got a few grays, you got a few neutrals. I did a quick coloring demo here where um, I just wanted to, well first I just wanted to do blends, so I kind of went around and um, just tried to do like a color wheel, kind of seeing how the colors blended, and they were they were fine. Um, I did most of this with a chisel tip, and you'll see why in a minute, and then I decided just to use like do some flat coloring with a really pastel tones, and then like go around the edges and add another layer of that same pastel tone for a little bit of shading, and that worked pretty well too. Um, so there you can see kind of the the color variety that you can get. Um, if you're going to blend your pastels out, though, these are the lightest shades that were available. You kind of just want to layer up those lighter tones if you want to keep it pastel, because once you start blending into the, the other tones that are offered, it's almost like, um, it's mostly pastel and vibrant. There isn't as much, you know, like you can blend those two together, but it's going to really give you a more darker you know, a more darker tone there. So if you go those two, you're going to end up somewhere in there. Um, which is fine. It's nice and vibrant. I know that if you want pastels, just, you know, just layer up the pastels because you're going to get too dark if you start blending in with the other colors. But overall, I think they behaved pretty well. Um, these are available in a variety of different configurations. So this is the 80 pack. They also have a 120 pack assorted and they have a 48 pack assorted. Then they have um, these add-on sets that you can uh, purchase to kind of beef up your assortment sets. So they have 48 sets 
Um, they have a pastel range, which does have some duplicates. I was noticing in this set a couple, but then it's but a bunch of new fresh colors. Uh, it's got a tropical range and it's got a boho range. And um, overall, the color system is 227 colors. But in order to get all those colors, I think you need to purchase the 120 set and then the 348 sets, the pastel, the tropical, and the boho. And I think they also have other 48 sets, but that, those are what you want to get, I think, to get all the colors. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, these are new, this is a new line of markers. So if I am wrong on anything, please let me know in the comments below. But I, that's what I understand it to be going by what it says on the Amazon listing. But if you do that, you're going to end up with 260 markers. So you'll have 34 duplicates. Um, you know, between them. And you might actually have, there might actually be um, more duplicates than that, like colorless blenders, but I'm not sure. That's that's just kind of my back of the envelope um, estimations. These are more expensive than the brush markers, which I think is kind of funny, but, um, but we'll compare them in a minute. Um, the 120 set is running 129, the 80 set is $80, and the 48 set is $40. Um, and there were 15% off coupons on available for some of the sets. And um, you can also get individual colors in six packs. So if you use up a color, um, rather than you know being able to buy one color to replace it, you've got to buy a pack of six of the same color, which I don't think is the most practical way to sell the markers unless you're a teacher buying for a class. Um, and the, the six packs are $17, roughly. So um, I think for that price, you could buy like a sketch marker or an Altenew marker or an Art and Fly marker or a Copic marker and a bottle of refill ink and get a little more mileage and less waste. So I'm not crazy about that. But um, one thing I want to mention, these the color system that these markers use, it's the same color system that the old style uses. And it seems to be the um, the same coloring system that Altenew uses. And Altenew does sell refill inks. So um, I think they're around six or seven bucks a bottle, pretty good size bottle. So if you did want to refill one, then that's what I would do. Now I'm just gonna grab the colorless blender marker here. I don't know why I took that uh, purple marker out. Um, what I would do if I was going to refill them is I'd probably pull out the chisel nib and just drip it in there. And I don't see why you couldn't. These these nibs seem to be, they look like they'd be very durable. And I mean, I would think that's why these are priced more than the brush markers because the nibs come out nice and easy um, without tweezers. Just gently pinch them like this and pull it right out. Um, I think that it's these nibs because I have not seen chisel nibs like this before. And we'll, um, we'll take a look at those. So... The, um, like I mentioned, these are around a dollar a marker, give or take. Their brush markers are a little bit less than that. And I would honestly say for a beginner, I would go with the brush markers. I think their brush markers are a pretty good value. Um, so the inks, I didn't notice the inks to be any different. I did, so because my, my, I like the Artify brush markers so much. They're upstairs on my fun art desk. So whenever I'm working in my sketchbook here, I'm using the Artify markers usually. So that was Artify marker. Whoops, that was Artify markers. The brush, brush and uh, chisel ones. That was Artify markers. That was Artify markers. I, you know, they're vibrant. They blend well. They work really well with my, the mixed media techniques I like to do with color pencil. Um, I think that's that's probably it for the Artifies. But uh, yeah, that's you know, I like them. Uh, so there's the color selection that you get in the 80 set. You can look online. I uh, have links to Amazon, and you can see what's in each of the sets if you want to try some out. Um, they also give you a printed swatch if you don't feel like color it in, coloring it in, a little demo that you can do. It comes with stickers to add to your markers for an accurate color representation. Because let me tell you, the caps are not accurate. That's my uh, swatch for the brush markers. They need to be recolored though because they've been hanging on the wall in bright sunlight so they do fade. Uh, but that's typical for Elcal markers. Um, yeah, so they come with these stickers. The, the caps are not a perfect match. And also I would recommend that you swatch on the paper that you typically use if color matching is really important for you because you are going to, um, I noticed that on this paper, the markers looked a little bit lighter than it did on my Nina Classic Crest cardstock that I typically use for coloring. Um, I feel like my, looking on my can camera monitor, it looks like these are lighter than they are in real life. I just want to make a note of that. Like these are almost like bleached out there on my camera. Um, maybe if I bring it up closer, you can kind of see the colors 
colors a little bit better. Um, I'm not sure why it's doing that, but let's compare the old style and the new style because the old Artify markers have pretty much the same brush tip, I mean the same chisel tip that you would see on pretty much every marker. So this is the new style, the enhanced style if you will. You've got a plastic color chip on one end, you've got a um, tapered body that is non-roll because it's kind of like an oval, and you've got the fine tip on the other end with no color indication on the end. So, I mean, you could make, punch out a little sticker or you could probably even color the plastic there if you wanted to, but I don't think that would be very accurate. Now on the old style, you have a the same kind of caps on each end, you've got a chisel and you've got a brush tip. And um, I really like the brush tip. The brush tips are reversible. They don't advertise that, but they're very much like the Ohuhus where you can pull them out and, and reinsert them if they get frayed. Um, I haven't had to do that and I've used mine quite a bit, but that's an option there. And let's just, this is the old style. I have no, um, I have no uh, brush lettering talent. <laughs> and then let's look at the nibs in comparison, the chisel nibs, since those are, those both markers have that. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. The new style has a very sharp point and it's also skinny. It's got like a skinny blade. So that's the new. This is the old. That's on its edge. If I go straight, that's how it is. If I go straight on this one, that's how it is. If I go on the edge, that's how it is. It's a very skinny tapered blade. Um, so, you know, you can get detail. And if I go the old one and I write detail, I get a much thicker, I get a much thicker, um, I get a much thicker line. Oh my gosh, staying in frame. I gotta zoom out a little bit because I can't seem to stay in frame. So the thing I noticed when I was coloring with these, I did a lot of, I pretty much did everything with the chisel tip. I do think that might be a little bit awkward for a beginner because you might not know like where the, the chisel tip is gonna end if you're if you're coloring, but I found it pretty, them pretty easy to use. However, with the price being the same or the brush tips even being a little bit less, I would go personally with a brush tip. So this is the, um, the bullet tip on the, on the new one. And this is the brush tip on the old one. So, um, you know, your bullet tip does give you that that option of having that really fine tip if that's something that's important to you. The uh, the brush tip markers, I think the 108 set was around $80, maybe a little bit more if it came in a plastic case, it's, and that has gone up. It used They used to be less than that. Um, and the 120 set is 129, so a little bit more over a dollar for the new enhanced ones and a little bit under for the brush ones. So I would say go with, if it was me, and I had to choose between the two, I would go with the brush tips and I would choose the plastic case even if it is 10 bucks more because the durability of that case um, is, is really nice, especially if you're getting this for a teen or you like to travel with your art supplies. I actually, ironically, don't have mine stored in my case because I had another marker case up on my desk that, a marker stand that I have all my markers in uh, with individual slots, but um, but it's a, it's a great little case. But so is this. I mean, it, it totally just depends on what your needs are. And like I said, um, if you do need to refill one, then you could always do that with the Alta New Colors if they have the if they have a, that same color. Um, I don't know how many markers Alta New has versus Artify, but they do seem to be running on that same system. And there aren't too many that run on that. Uh, I always like to see if I can figure out where the... Um, where the markers are coming from or what what where the same kind of inks are because that way if there are refills available I think that makes way more sense than buying a pack of six markers. Now something else I did notice when I was researching for this review I went to Amazon and I looked at the brush marker listing and they are now offering six packs of the brush and chisel version which I think is um which I think is, you know, it's it's interesting. It's ten dollars for the six pack of the brush and chisel versus seventeen of the enhanced chisel and bullet tip, which kind of blows my mind. I think it's interesting. I do think, um, you know what? Let's let's just let's just color something. Let me just um, 
go back to my piece of paper here. Let's do, let me just do a leaf. And I'll show you what I mean about, about how I would color them. So let's do a leaf here. Let me get a couple colors. So this one is um, G535. So I'm, you know what? I'm just gonna go with the ones right in, right in a row, okay? And I will use a chisel tips for everything. So I'd go in first with my, with my lightest color, then I go back to my dark. But we'll do everything with the, with the, with the chisel edge. So this is what I'm talking about here, where it might be a little bit weird to figure out where the tip of your marker is going to land. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, try to keep it in frame. So if I'm going in and I'm like, ah, I don't quite know where the tip. It just seems like it might be difficult to tell. I actually I didn't really have any trouble with that, but um, I just wanted to put it out there. And then I go in with my medium color, color over my darks. I did a demo on the unboxing. Actually, I haven't gone out of the lines though. And then I go back in with the lights. I mean, it's kind of a nice, a nice chisel nib. I guess I would say if you prefer a chisel nib to a to working with a brush nib, this is a nice chisel nib. You just you do have a little bit more versatility. Okay. I mean, so that's a pretty good blend. You know what? I could just grab three shades of any other marker that has a chisel nib and just compare. Hopefully, I'll get a good. Uh, a good variety. I'm just going to eyeball colors here. Okay. I don't know if these will go together. I'm just kind of grabbing them. This one looks a little, a little dark, but I'll do this. I'll do these all with the chisel ends so we can see here. Let me just draw another. This might not be dark enough, actually. That doesn't look dark enough. I get to grab a darker marker. Let's do this one. Actually, let's do these two and this one. Those should be dark enough. And we'll do chisel edge. Oh my gosh, why can't I grab the chisel edge? <laughs> okay, so with these typical chisel edges, you know, it is a thicker line. It's a little bit more, it's a little bit more bulky feeling. Of course, these all have brush ends, so I would just be using the brush ends normally. I didn't prime this one. I just wanted to kind of see the, the just how it felt to color with other, the other nibs. Oh, this one doesn't have a chisel nib. That one's got a bullet and a brush. Uh, this one doesn't have a chisel nib. Hopefully it's the right color. Close enough. Yeah, I mean, it's not that big of a difference, to be honest. I thought it would feel quite a bit different having that pointy, the pointy end, although I did get a nice sharper edge than what I got there. That That is a little more sloppy. But overall, um, I would say yes for those chisel nibs. You are getting a little bit more of a, um, of a pointy, versatile nib. I would say if, if you like to use chisel nibs, it's a nice chisel nib to have. The other chisel nib I really like is on the Prismacolor marker, but it's very different. I'm going to show you one of those as well. Um, they have uh, a nib that's really chunky and you can get a fine line or you can get a really wide line or you can get in the middle. They call it a tri-chisel because depending on how you turn it, but I can't get, I wouldn't be able to get quite as fine a line as I would on the, um, on the Artifice. So I'll just show you those three nibs and then just a typical chisel nib just for your, um, for your information. Um, I kind of don't feel that they are, I mean, I guess for around a dollar a marker, I can't complain, but I would say that I would pick the brush tips, which I think are an amazing value um, over the chisel edge one, just because if you're a beginner, blending is so much easier with the brush nib. Um, if you're on a budget, the brush nibs are less money for in this particular line. Um, I don't really understand other than, you know, I'm, I mean, it's the same, it's the same color system, the same as the, uh, as the other ones, as their brush tip markers, so I don't see why they're enhanced except the, uh, except for the nib. Um, I found the color line in the 108 brush markers to be pretty good, too. I'll just show you that here. Keep in mind, some of these have faded because they were hanging upstairs in the light, but, um, 
yeah, I mean, I guess I just don't see the big benefit of the new enhanced markers versus the older brush markers. They're more expensive, and um, I think they're, they would be a little bit more difficult to use for a beginner. I do use chisel nibs a lot, so I did enjoy them. Um, but I would still recommend the, the brush over the over the chisel nib. That said, if you love a chisel nib and you want a chisel nib with more control, I definitely think those chisel nibs do give you more control. I didn't have any issues coloring and blending with those markers um, on a stamped image. It's a decent sized stamped image, but it's still a stamped image. Um, and you do have that tiny fine tip bullet point if you want to go in for details. So I could see how, you know, stampers might like that or people that like to work a little bit smaller might like that. Um, but in all honesty, that, that chisel nib can go down from one millimeter all the way up to seven millimeters, and the uh, the fine point is one millimeter. So, I mean, this is the fine. This is the chisel. So, I mean, it's almost like you don't even need the, the bullet tip unless you, you know, it, unless the chisel tip feels a little clunky. I don't know if the prices are going to stay like this. Um, I kind of have the feeling that maybe they're a little bit um high now but they might come down in a few months um a lot of times i've noticed that products hit amazon and they kind of land a little high and then the price kind of comes down over like the following months so that might be the case um or they might just be seeing like what people are willing to spend for it i don't know i've noticed that a lot with artisa products this is artifice so i don't know um but i mean i guess i feel like these are decent they're they're not bad for the money if this was if you gave me these markers five years ago i would be singing their praises but there's so much competition out there for your dollar for um alcohol markers that um i would honestly recommend going with the brush tip ones uh, cause they're, they're a really good value. These, I just don't, I don't see, I don't see what's so enhanced about them, I guess would be the, uh, would be the bottom line. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with them. I don't think they're a bad product, but I just don't, I, I don't, uh, I think there's better ways to spend your money, like on the, uh, the brush version, which is, you know, which is one I, I use a lot and I like. Uh, these are fine. They didn't knock my socks off, but they're not bad. I hope you enjoyed this review. I hope you found it helpful. Um, there's so many markers out right now. The, you know, these do have a different type of body, a different type of chisel nib. So, you know, there's something unique about them. They are pretty comfortable to hold. They're non-roll. They have a nice matte white finish. They feel nice. They feel like a high, high end marker. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's up to you. It's up to the quality that you want. Does anyone recognize the shape though? I thought that there was like, um, like a company out of the UK, a craft company that had a marker of this shape, and I could not find it. I thought it might have been the Nouveau markers, but they're not tapered like this. Um, maybe I'm just losing my mind. I could have swore I saw a marker that was shaped like this before. But anyway, uh, the caps aren't a great match, so you definitely want to swatch them. That's something I did notice, that the caps um, were, were, not, were not that accurate. Actually, that one doesn't look too bad. But especially on my Nina paper, my Nina paper did show darker than what these swatches are. So keep that in mind. When anytime a, a marker company has a swatch included, you should probably still swatch it on your own paper just so you know how it's going to react when you're coloring your stamped images or you're doing some artwork. But I guess that's all I have to say about these. Um, sorry it took so long for this review to get out. I was kind of thinking I was going to like something was going to hit me and I was going to be like, that's why they did it. That's why they're enhanced. But it just didn't come to me. Um, I think they're fine. I think they're decent. Um, I'd still recommend the brush ones though over these. They're cheaper and I think they're easier to use. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoy product reviews. Until next time, happy crafting!